All right, our final learning objective for systems of equations unit is to talk about applications. It's just a fancy way of saying word problems. So we're gonna do word problems associated with systems. All right, we know when we have a system, we have these two different equations. So really the first thing we're gonna do is create the system ourselves, and then we can uh, solve it using our system that we created. So let's see how we would do that. All right, so here's our first example. We have a concert that has a price for students and a price for adults. All right, we get some information. How much does each ticket cost? So we need to know what the price for students is and what the price for adults is. So generally with these problems, the things you're looking for, your variables. So I'm gonna do S for student price. And I'm gonna do A for adult price. And we should be able to make two different equations using those letters. So one thing we know if we do two students go with their one parent, it costs $90. So two students is two times student price plus one adult ticket, that should be 90. All right, four students go with two adults. So we have four student tickets and two adult tickets. That should be 180. And that should be our system. If we take two student tickets and buy an adult ticket, it should be $90. If we take four student tickets and two adult tickets, it should be $180. Let's see, 2x. And I just realized this is not a good problem because this doesn't give you enough information because these are the exact same equation. So let's see. Oh, I guess that's a good enough reason then to say that we just don't know. All right, so this is a bad problem, All right, but it's still a good practice of making the equations. I already made the equations from uh, the stuff that was given to us. Uh, how come we don't know if I were to divide this bottom equation, everything by two, I get the top equation. So really I don't have two different equations. I just have one equation. That's just a good thing. Again, A, to show that I make mistakes and B, to show there's actually sometimes you create a system that you don't know the uh, answer to. There's not enough information to solve it, even though you think you have two different pieces of information. All right, so let's instead do a problem that hopefully actually works. All right, a movie theater sells tickets and popcorn. Right, one person goes and buys a popcorn and pays twenty-two fifty. A couple goes and shares a popcorn and pays forty fifty. Right, how much does the ticket cost and how much does the popcorn cost? All right, so again, the thing we're trying to look for, we're trying to answer these two questions. The things we're looking for generally are variables. So ticket cost, I'm going to call T, the ticket price, and popcorn price, I'm going to call P. So now hopefully we can make two different equations with those letters. As right, so one person goes, they're gonna buy a ticket and they're gonna buy one popcorn and it's gonna cost them $22.50. Another person, or a couple is gonna go, so a couple is two people, so they're gonna have to buy two tickets and they're gonna share a popcorn, so they also just have one popcorn and it's gonna cost them $40.50. All right, and based on the fact that you've passed a bunch of skill checks about solving these in the video, I'm not gonna cover how to solve them, I'm just gonna use a graph, so I'm gonna graph these two equations. And we learned this early on in this unit, is if you graph the two equations, where the two things cross is the answer. And our answer is that the ticket price should be $18, and the popcorn price should be $4.50. And that seems to make sense with our two scenarios. If you buy a ticket and a popcorn, it's $22.50. If you bought two tickets and a popcorn, it'd be $40.50. All right, so this is just the general idea of how to set up the equations. Again, I know from the skill checks you've already done, you can solve this. All right, so once you get there, you would solve it by hand, right? But that's the answer you should get if you solve it. All right, so here's one that's your turn. All right, two numbers added together, give 12. Twice the first number minus the second number is three. What are the numbers? So it's not really a real world situation. It's just stuff about numbers, but figure out how you can... Uh, make two equations that represent these two numbers. And here's my setup and answer. I just did the typical things when we're talking about numbers without um, any type of reference to anything. I just call them X and Y. So if I add the two numbers together, I get 12. So just X plus Y equals 12. Twice the first number. So if I take the first number and multiply it by two, 
minus the second number, so subtracting y, I should get 3. So that's how I get those equations. Again, I just used a graph. I graphed them, figure out where they intersect to get the answer. But again, I know you can solve these equations by hand now. All right, the last type of problem we're going to look at is called a mixing problem. So the skill check will kind of have uh, two problems like we just did, and then one of these mixing problems. All right, so these mixing problems come because you're mixing two things together to create a third thing. All right, so you have a, ju a drink that's 10% juice, and now that's 30% juice. How many of each do you have to mix together to create five liters of 25% juice? All right, so right away, these mixing problems are all going to be really similar. So they look compli complicated because there's percentages and things, but the good news is it's kind of an outline for how to solve them. All right, so the thing is, how much of each? All right, so that's our variables. Our variables are going to be, let's call it x and y. So we need to figure out how much of the first one, that's going to be x, how much of the second one, that's my y, and we just need to know we mix them together. So one thing we know is we want to create five liters of this drink. So we know however much we have of the first drink, however ever much we have of the second drink, has to be equal to five. Right? Because if I took two liters and three liters, they're five, or take one and four, or some combination in the middle, I know that when I add these two together, you're going to get how much you want at the end, which is five liters. So that's all our first equation. It's always be really similar, just kind of x plus y equals the total amount you want. And notice this one doesn't use anything about our percentages, so our next equation is going to use our percentages. And if we think about what we have, we have kind of these two barrels. This barrel has some liquid in it. This barrel has some liquid in it. We add them together, and we get our final liquid. But we know this, this first one has 10% juice, so if we kind of use uh, chemistry, physics, whatever, the juice kind of settled to the bottom. This one will only be 10% juice, all right? So maybe we let all the juice settle to the bottom. This next one's 30% juice. That right, so says more juice settled at the bottom. And the last one is 25% juice. So it's kind of in the middle of those two. So instead of talking about the entire quantities, which is kind of this blue squiggly line, the entire quantities, that gave us our first equation. Our second equation is just about these green parts, which represent the juice. So how much juice is in this part, but we know the entire thing is x, but only 10% of that is juice. So if we take x and multiply it by 10%, which is 0.1, that's how much juice is in that first barrel. The second barrel, we know the entire quantity is y, but only 30% of that is actually juice. So the green part is going to be, oops, wrong color, 0.3y. So if we take the amount on y and multiply it by 0.3, that's the juice in there. Last one, we know there's five liters in there, but 25% of it is juice, so I multiply by 0.25. That'll give me that percentage of juice. All right, and this together is my system. And this is one I definitely would not expect you to solve by hand. It is entirely possible to solve by hand, but it just takes more time than it's worth. So I would just graph this using a graphing calculator, which I'm doing right now. See where they intersect. Right, the two lines intersect when x is 1.25 and y is 3.75. So it makes sense. I'm going to use more of the 35 or 30 percent to get the 25 percent because I don't want to make the percentage go down too much. I right, this is my final answer. All right, we're going to do one more just so you can kind of see that the outline is really similar, and there'll be plenty of practice for these as well. Actually, right, so you have a bag of trail mix that's 5 percent peanuts another that's 40% peanuts, and you get two pounds of a trail mix that's 25%. So again, same setup, we need to know the amount of 5% and the amount of 40%. And we know however much x plus y, when we add the two amounts together, we wanna to create two pounds of peanuts. So just like our last um, problem, we're always gonna get like x plus y equals the final amount. And then our second equation is gonna use the percentages from the first bag of peanuts. We have x amount, but only 5% of it is peanuts. So make sure if you turn 5% into a decimal, you get that zero in front of it. The second amount, 40% of that is peanuts, so that's 0.4. 
and that equals, we want the final result to be 25%, so we take 25% of the final amount, which we know is two. Okay, so all of that together is our system. So we want the quantities to add up to two pounds and the percentages of peanuts to add up to 25%. When I do that, I get 0 0.857 and y is 1.143. Let's just make sure I didn't make any mistakes when I typed it in. x plus y equals 2.05x. Yep, that looks right. So again, not nice round numbers in this case. I, but we set up our equations the same way. Use our graphing calculator to graph these two different lines and see where they intersect and they happen to intersect at this point. Uh, so that's where these uh, two quantities match up for what we need. All right, true or false question, just thinking outside the box a little bit. All right, you can mix 2% milk together with 1% milk in order to create 3% milk. So look at those last two problems, see if that would make sense for a mixing problem. All right, if not, it's false. If it is, it's true. All right, so this is kind of the last learning objective for this unit. So it's just doing word problems. So there's about 10 practice ones for you to work on before the skill check. But they're all very similar to the ones we did in the video. So make sure you look over the video, right, see which ones you understand and which ones you don't so that you can ask for help.